Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to cover how to configure a VMware vCloud Automation Center version 5.2.2 with vSphere and vCloud endpoints. My name is Yves Sanford. I'm the CEO and lead architect of the Com Division B. First of all, we need to connect to our VCAC web user interface. Therefore, we are going to open a browser and actually um, access the VCAC homepage. Log in with a user account appropriate um, to go onto the VCAC administrator role level. Within VCAC, click on VCAC administrator, then select credentials, and we are going to create one set of credentials here, which we are going to leverage later on with the vCenter server and the vCloud director. For vCenter server, just give it a name, type in the username it should um, leverage and confirm the password two times. Be sure to press the green check mark to save the entry. Next, we are going to define the actual endpoint. Click from the on the VCAC administrator menu to endpoint, select new endpoint vSphere vCenter from the virtual segment. Again, we need to give it a name. In our case, we are going to call it um, the fully qualified domain name, but that is depending on your setup. Um, be sure that in the address, you type the complete URL, including HTTPS colon slash slash fully qualified domain name slash SDK, and then select the credentials um, from the credentials dropdown. Um, as you can see, you could also specify a VCNS um, connection over here, but we are going to skip that for this specific scenario. Once the endpoint has been saved, we can actually go ahead and um, move on with the actual installation of the next endpoint. We are going to click New Cloud V app vCloud Director. This allows us to define a vCloud Director endpoint. Again, we need to give it a name. In this case, we are going to use the fully qualified domain name of the vCloud Director instance. Enter the address. As we are going to access vCloud Director from a system org level, we are going to not actually append an individual organization. Select the credentials to log in and Finally, if necessary, specify an organization. Again, click OK to save the new endpoint. For the next few steps, we can close the browser and actually go back to the console of our VCAC server. We need to install a VCAC agent for VCAC um, actually to be able to talk to the vSphere server. The agent will be contacted actually by the VCAC dem worker which we installed in one of the previous videos. Click on install um, or double click the VCAC agent setup, um, confirm the user account control message and wait for the install to pop up. Once the install window is shown, um, you just need to click next to move to the next screen where we need to confirm the license agreement as usually, click I accept, click next. And now you need to be careful. The agent name needs to be exactly the same way you, will, you are going to define the agent name within VCAC. Again, we are going to leverage the fully qualified domain name here because that's easiest to ensure that the naming conventions are actually 100% correct between the two different systems. So once you enter the agent name, you need to also point VCAC back to the VCAC host. Um, in this case, it's going to be VCAC dot um, domain name, and we need to also point it to the model manager itself. In our case, both are the same system. Click Next to continue.
Now you need to specify which agent you want to install. In our case, it's easy. We want to install the vSphere agent, but this also shows you all the other agent possibilities we have in our environment, like PowerShell, VDI PowerShell, WMI, Xen, and other systems. Click Next to confirm your choice. Next, we need to specify the login credentials to authorize the agent against our VCAC server. In this scenario, we are going to first define the um, user account under which VCAC agent is going to run. This is going to be the same service account we leveraged for our DEM worker. However, in theory, you could actually specify your own individual um, account for this. Next, we specify the account credentials we are going to leverage to actually access our VCAC server. So this is going to be the um, either an admin account or a service account, depending on your individual setup. Once completed, again, click Next. Finally, we need to give it the generic endpoint name. This is quite important. This is going to be the endpoint name as we define it in VCAC. So be sure that you don't put any typos in. Finally, click Next, and um, then the system is going to deploy the VCAC agent. Once the install is completed, Click Finish to close the installation pop-up window. Next, we need to go back to our main system or our desktop system and leverage a browser window to access our VCAC instance. Log into VCAC with a user account which has the VCAC administrator role um, allocated at, at, into it. Then from within the VCAC administrator menu, select Enterprise Groups. Next, click New Enterprise Group. As you can see, we currently only have our cloud enterprise information within the system. So we need to validate why our VCS system hasn't collected any data. So for that, we are going to just open the endpoint again, click Edit, click OK, and um, select the Enterprise Group again just to make sure that it actually re-initiates a data collection. Once the data has been collected, we can click Try Again by clicking New Enterprise Group, which will show us whether um, our vCloud Director and vCenter Server are collected. In this case, we can see that both endpoints, the VC VCS, so the vSphere vCenter server, as well as the vCloud Director instance are completely populated as they both show up uh, below in the compute resource segment. Next, we are going to configure the um, necessary components for our and new enterprise group. Therefore, we need to give it a name. In our case, we are going to call it virtual enterprise group. We need to define which users can administer this enterprise group. And finally, we also need to define which compute resource is going to be assigned to this enterprise group. As you can see here, we have both our vSphere vCenter resources as well as our vCloud Director resources. Clicking OK will create the enterprise group. 
as you can see now we have more entries showing up into the left pane so beside the dashboard and vcac administrator we had before we now have also reports enterprise administrator and discovery available let's quickly um, look on the enterprise administrator menu and go to compute resources this is actually an area where you can if necessary force a recollection of data from your vSphere vCenter environment. For that you click onto the resource, click data collection and you get to a screen like this where you can see the inventory area, the state and performance data and the status of the individual um, criteria. So in our case here we can see inventory is in progress, state is in queue and performance is in queue as well. These different data collections are responsible for um, the individual data collected from vSphere in this case. As long as you don't define any rules, the system will update these um, records every 24 hours automatically. If you think you need a smaller interval, then you can actually lower the frequency in hours, so the absolute minimum is every hour um, of data collection. Keep in mind though that um, it is not meant that VCAC is actually going to recognize a lot of the systems in vSphere. Normally you would create any objects from within vCloud Automation Center and therefore it's no longer necessary that VCAC actually needs to scan the vSphere environment day in and day out. As we can see now in the meantime the inventory scan has been completed and shows us succeeded. Now we need to wait for the state and um, performance data, which as you can see now have been completed as well. This concludes our little demonstration on how to define vSphere and vCloud endpoints in vCloud Automation Center. My name is Yves Sanford, CEO of Comdivision Group. If you need to reach out to me, follow me on my Twitter handle at Yves Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thank you and we look forward um, to present to you in one of our next sections further details on how to configure and use vCloud Automation Center version 5.2.